welcome back to our channel. So today, I'm going to share to you all about Montessori. So ang dami nagre-request nito guys sa Instagram, sa Facebook na gumawa daw ako ng video about Montessori. So sa sobrang dami ng information na uh, about sa Montessori, I cannot fit everything sa isang video. So I decided to make a series of wow. video and this is the first series ng Montessori. I'm gonna entitle this all about Montessori. This first series is all about Montessori lang talaga. What is Montessori? What are the basic principles about Montessori? Ano yung mismo ako personally kung ano yung nagustuhan ko about Montessori? Why am I applying it to my toddler right now? So today I will try my best to simplify all this information na i-share ko sa inyo para mas lalo yung para mas lalo yung malaman kung ano ba talaga yung Montessori. Is it really about sa wooden toys lang or wooden materials? Is it really about sa mga low shelves lang? So it is more than that. Kaya ako nagusto personally, kaya ako nagustuhan yung Montessori because of its of the principles behind this education, okay? So, before that, I have to introduce myself. I am Mommy She. I have a 2-year-old toddler, 27 months old na siya. And I started applying Montessori to him when he was 4 months old. So, hindi ko na-start ng infant kasi ang Montessori, it's 0 months. Kahit kakapanganak pa lang yan, pwede mo nang i-apply yung Montessori. Pero ako, I started it nung nag-4 months pa lang siya. And until now, we are still practicing Montessori. And it's and it really helps talaga, sobrang malaking tulong talaga ng uh, pag apply ko ng Montessori kay Lucas. So, for the record lang, uh, baka magtanong kayo, where did I acquire my knowledge from Montessori? Siyempre, number one, I, sir, I research, I do my research, I read a lot of books, uh, ano pa ba, I... I do free online classes sa internet para mas malam, marami akong malaman about sa Montessori. So, yun. Doon ko na-acquire lahat ng mga information ko about sa Montessori. And, syempre, nanonood din ako ng mga YouTube videos uh, ng mga mummies. Kaya lang, ang number one na napansin ko, naghahanap ako ng uh, mga Pilipin, Filipino or Filipina na uh, nag nag-shoot ng YouTube videos na about sa Montessori. Kaya lang, wala akong mahanap. So, halos lahat ng mga pinapanood ko, mga sa ibang bansa. So, na kaya naisip ko, why not make a video about Montessori para naman sa mga Filipina mummies? ba So, ngayon, I will be sharing to you all about Montessori from a Filipina perspective. So, first off, what is Montessori? Montessori is a type of education na dinevelop ni Maria Montessori. Ayan siya, yun yung picture niya. So, si Maria Montessori, uh, napansin niya na yung mga bata, they learn well kapag uh, sila'y gumagalaw, kapag uh, uh, they learn well uh, sa around their environment. Kasi parang binrate niya yung notion na sa classroom dapat nakaupo lang yung mga bata. So, a Montessori, Montessori is a type of education na yung mga bata, they explore their environment, they can move and they learn through movement. And as I share to you yung mga principles ng Montessori, mas malalaman mo pa kung ano kaganda yung Montessori education. So we can do this at home pa lang kahit baby pa lang yung bata, kahit baby pa lang yung, as in kahit infant pa lang yung baby mo, you can start Montessori at home. Or kahit nag-aaral siya sa isang, sa normal na school, you can still practice Montessori at home. Siyempre, medyo may kamahalan yung mga Montessori dito sa school, ay uh, dito sa Pilipinas, ba? Pero, ikaw mismo, mami, pwede mo siyang i-apply sa bahay. That's why I am here to help you kung paano ito i-apply. All about Montessori. Montessori is not just about wooden toys, shelves, yung mga maliliit na mga maliliit na mga toys or gamit para sa bata. It's more than that. Nagustuhan ko sa Montessori really is yung principles niya that I am going to share to you today. Number one principle is the sensitive periods. Lahat ng mga bata meron silang sensitive period where they learn quickly. As in, kapag, uh, kumbaga, ito yung period nila na kung saan uh, interesado sila sa ganito. A one-year-old can be interested sa alphabet and yung isang one-year-old hindi siya interested sa alphabet. So, iba-iba sila ng sensitive periods. That's why we have to, uh, kailangan natin ng mga materials or activities that are needed for that sensitive period. Kailangan mo siyang i-observe kung ano ba talaga, kung ano yung period niya right now. 
So, I came up to the second principle, observe the child. In Montessori, sobrang uh, famous nung line na follow the child. Follow the lead of the child. Follow mo kung ano yung interest niya. Follow mo kung ano yung uh, uh, kinagigiliwan niya right at the moment. And yun yung mga activities na ibigay mo sa kanya. Kasi mas matututo siya, mas lalo, mas, they learn quickly kasi nga dahil sa sensitive periods. And you will only know the sensitive periods if you will observe your child. Kumbaga, when you observe your child, talagang you will find time na tignan mo siya, ano yung ginagawa niya. Pag naglalaro kayo, ano yung laruan na talagang he loves it, uh, nakakapag-concentrate siya, matagal niyang laruin. So, kung yun yun, ibig sabihin, that's the that's the material or that's the activity na interested siya ngayon or sensitive siya. Yun yung sensitive period niya ngayon. Okay, like for example, dati, uh, si Lucas, nung mga bandang one year old pa lang siya, tinuturuan ko siya ng alphabet. Pero kahit anong effort ko, anong turo ko sa kanya para matutunan niya yung alphabet, wala. To the point na mapufrustrate ka na lang. Kaya dun ko nalaman yung sensitive periods. So, nung nag two years old siya, dun, pa lang, dun ko pa lang nakita na, ay, ang galing na niya sa alphabet. Talagang siya na mismo, tinitignan na niya. Kung makakita lang siya ng kahit maliit na maliit na alphabet or letter lang, sasabihin na niya, Mommy, what letter is this? Tapos siya mismo sasagutin niya. So, ganun. Ganun yung sensitive word. That's why you have to observe your child. Hindi mo pwedeng ipilit sa kanila kung ano yung hindi naman nila interest. Because kahit anong effort mo, mahihirapan ka. So, number three, kapag nakita mo na yung sensitive period niya habang ino-observe mo siya, prepared environment is the third principle. Sa, sa Montessori, kailangan, yes, you will prepare a yes environment sa bata. Kung pwede kang maglagay ng mga, ng mga barrier or ng harang sa mga sa sa places na hindi siya pwedeng pumunta pero as long as dapat meron siyang yes environment na kung saan pwede siyang mag-move because in moving they learn in moving mas nagde-develop yung brain nila yun yung paniniwala ng Montessori in Montessori the environment is the best teacher itself Kung baga, lalabas lang sila, makita nila yung nature, tinuturoan na sila ng nature. Na kung nasa, nasa loob sila ng bahay, you have to prepare an environment for them. Kaya nauso sa Montessori, yung mga low-lying shelf, yung mga mabababang shelf na abot ng bata. Para anytime na gusto niyang, mag, mag, uh, anytime na gusto niyang maglaro, mag-isa niya, hindi ka na niya aabalahin siya na mismo yung kukuha. Because your environment is prepared for them. Number four principle is yung grace and courtesy. So, in Montessori, we treat our children based on how we wanted ourselves to be treated. So, gusto mo nang irespeto ka ng bata, irespeto mo din siya. Gusto mo na maging gracious yung bata sa'yo, maging gracious ka din sa kanya. So, kung ano lang yung nakikita nila sa'yo, yun din yung gagayahin nila. Kasi, di ba, lalo na yung mga bata sa... Ah, Lalo na yung toddler period nila, monkey see, monkey do sila. Kung ano yung makita nila sa'yo, yun yung gagawin. Kung ano yung sasabihin mo, yun yung sasabihin din nila. So, we have to be careful na maging gracious sa kanila, maging respectful, you speak respectful words, you speak truthful words for them. Para sila din, yun din yung ma-adapt nila. Number five principle is yung children uniqueness. Lahat ng mga bata, iba-iba sila. Lagi kong sinasabi sa mga video ko that don't compare. Huwag mo i-compare yung anak mo sa anak ng kapitbahay nyo or sa anak ng uh, kumari mo or what. Don't compare because lagi kong sinasabi, where comparison starts, contentment ends. Hindi ka na makokontento kahit ano pang talino ng anak mo, kahit ano pang ipakita niya sa'yo, lagi mo siyang compare So don't compare your child because they are unique. They are unique creatures. They develop at their own pace and they learn at their own pace. Because, sabi nga, learning is a natural process. Huwag mong ipilit kung hindi pa nila sensitive period. Pero kung sensitive period nila, dun ka magbigay ng magbigay ng mga activities. Kasi, yun nga, like I said earlier, they will learn quickly and effectively. Number six principle is yung self-discipline. In Montessori, uh, they don't really uh, give rewards or punishment. Ako naman, for me, gusto ko din yung principle na to, pero sometimes I give rewards kay Lucas. Pero yung punishment naman, before you give or before you give rewards or you give punishment, kapag halimbawa, they are upset or they are crying, they are having their temper tantrums, 
sa Montessori, you have to examine first why they are having that kind of tantrums. Bakit sila umiiyak? Baka naman tired na siya? Baka sobrang tired? Baka hungry? Or baka time of sleep na niya? Kaya uh, bad trip siya? So, you, before you punish or before you uh, before mo siya pagalitan, kailangan examine mo muna kung bakit siya nagkakaganon. Or baka ikaw naman may napakita ka sa kanya na uh, attitude mo or behavior mo na ganun ka. Kaya ginagaya ka lang niya. So, we really have to be careful sa mga uh, sinasabi or ginagawa natin. What it really means is they will learn to discipline themselves. Kung baga kapag pinakita mo sa kanila na you are very gracious to them, sila mismo habang lumalaki sila, they will learn to correct or discipline wow. themselves. Number seven principle is the freedom to move. So, sabi ko nga kanina, children learn best and children learn well if they are free to move. Kung nakakapag roam around sila, if they can get what they can. So, you have to create a yes space for your children or for your baby or for your toddler where they can get what they wanted to get without you saying to them, no, you cannot get that. So, kailangan kapag kanilagay mo siya sa isang lugar and then nag around siya, kapag gusto niyang kunin, makukuha niya. That's why you have to get rid of all yung mga hindi pwedeng, hindi pwedeng hawakan. Dangerous things. Kailangan you get rid of those before mo siya uh, before mo siya ilapag sa isang lugar or before mo siya hayaang maglaro. Kasi otherwise, you will always just say no, no, no. And when you just, when you always say no, masama yun sa mga bata because they will stop exploring. Eh yung exploring, yun lang naman yung time nila to learn, di ba? So by allowing freedom, they learn to explore and this help the growing brain to develop and learn. So number eight, ang pinaka-favorite natin, yung carefully chosen materials or what we call toys. Madalas na makita natin na mga toys sa Montessori are natural or wooden materials or toys because Montessori is pro-nature. Pero, uh, not necessarily naman na dapat laging wooden yung mga toys mo, lalo na masyadong mahal yung mga wooden toys, di ba? So, kail Ang pinakamaganda dito is not necessarily dapat wooden toys because yung principles lang naman talaga yung kinukuha mo dyan. Pero as much as possible, pwedeng wooden toys. Pero kung wala kang budget or wala kang mahanap, pwede naman kahit yung mga plastic toys or kung anong ma-DIY mo lang dyan, mami. So, kailangan tipid-tipid din, lalo na yung mga toys na yan, pagsasawaan din nila in the near future. Again, it's not about the mamahaling toys. It's all about the principle. So, huwag ka masyadong gumastos sa mga mamahaling toys, lalo na kung uh, budgeted lang yung mga budgeted ka lang. So, you really have to recycle. You really have to know kasi talaga yung principle before you apply yung Montessori. Huwag lang bili ng bili. Last principle is yung practical life skills. Ito yung isa sa mga favorite ko kasi si Lucas favorite din niya to. You just let them be involved in what you do. Like halimbawa, you're washing the dishes, you let them help you wash the dishes. Medyo messy nga lang yung practical life skills kasi nga, uh, yung mga katawan nila hindi pa talaga ganun ka-ready for those. Pero, you just enjoy the process. Yung, yung tinitignan natin dito is yung process and not the result. Kasi eventually, makikita mo lang lang, sila, sila, na, sila na lang mag-isa nila ginagawa yun. You, you let them be involved in your chores or simply talking to them kung ano yung ginagawa nila or kung ano yung ginagawa mo. Mag, uh, you just describe the environment, you just describe what you are doing. Like halimbawa, pinapaliguan mo siya, oh, I'm going to pour water on your head, I'm going to put shampoo, I'm going to put soap on your body. Yan, yung mga ganun na simple lang. That's, that is also considered as, as practical life skills. So, I will be showing to you more of this uh, materials, lahat ng mga toys, mga practical life skills na pwede ninyong i-share i-share or pwede ninyong gawin sa mga babies nyo on another videos para hindi tayo mapahaba. So, sobra, sobrang madami yung pwede nating, uh, pwede nating ibigay na mga activities sa mga bata and mga materials sa mga bata. If only we will observe them and we will know their sensitive periods, we will prepare, we can prepare an environment for them, and we will practice grace and courtesy. Only we will understand that every child is unique and that we will not compare them to other children. To practice self-discipline and to allow them the freedom to move. So yun, di ba? So isang sentence lang siya, pero nandun na lahat ng principle ng 
Montessori. Kung mayroon pa akong mga nakalimutan, I hope yung mga ibang mommies na nanonood, they will comment down below sa mga hindi ko pa nasabi na principles. Pero what what I said, yun yung mga favorite and yun yung mga pinakagustong principle ko sa Montessori. So, we hope na inspire namin kayo to apply Montessori to your children, to your babies, or to your toddler. And I pray and I hope marami kayo natutunan based on a Filipina perspective para maiba naman. Okay? So, maybe on our next video, I will be sharing to you some tips on how to start Montessori sa bahay ninyo. Kasi you can start Montessori kahit 2 years old na yung baby mo, kahit 3 years old na siya, or kahit 0 months, or 2 months, or 4 months pa lang siya. It's never too late. Because yung mga bata, madali silang hubugin, and madali silang matuto. Okay, so I hope you learn so much from this video, with, which is lagi yun yung prayer ko na marami pong ma-inspire, marami, ma, marami pong matulungan ang video na to. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, thumbs up this video if you like it. And comment down below sa... Uh, comment down below kung ano yung favorite principles mo na nabanggit ko. And kung if you are trying Montessori to your children. So, yon I hope and God bless everyone sa pagtatry nyo ng pag-Montessori nyo sa mga babies nyo. Don't forget to like this video and please, please share it to your friends or sa or share it to your family para sila din alam din nila kung ano yung Montessori. So, thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day. Bye! channel. So today I will be sharing to you the second series of All About Montessori. I will be sharing to you the five steps on how to start Montessori at home. So previously, the first series of our Mont uh, All About Montessori is just plain All About Montessori. I defined Montessori and what are the principles behind that na favorite ko tsaka nagustuhan ko. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a link on the description box below. So, if you want to watch that, please watch it. And mas maganda, watch nyo muna yun before you watch this. But, if you are knowledgeable na and uh, alam mo na yung all about Montessori, you can continue to watch this video. So, without further ado, let's start. But, before that, I have a little disclaimer. I'm not a Montessori teacher or guide. I'm nor a professional Montessorian. I'm not also a trained Monte I'm not also trained in Montessori, but I'm just here to share lahat ng mga nalaman ko uh, that I learned from the books, from what I research, from my online classes, and from I watch. Uh, at the best of my ability, yung pinaka-simple form na alam ko na i-share sa mga mommies out there who have no time to research but they are very interested in Montessori. Uh, of course, on a, fa on a Filipino family perspective. So, yun lang. I'm not, we are not really strictly 100% Montessori. There, are, there is so much to learn, sabi ko nga. Marami pang dapat malaman and marami pa akong dapat malaman. So, we are always open for suggestions, comments, criticisms, and of course, additional learning about Montessori because yun naman talaga, diba? Dito sa community natin, tulungan tayo. So, I'm just here to share what I know and I hope you will enjoy this video. So, let's start. Okay, step number one, you have to prepare yourself. Okay, in Montessori, it, it is termed as prepared adult. So, ikaw mismo as a parent, ikaw yung mature, ikaw yung may mature na brain, at ikaw yung uh, alam mo na kung ano yung tama at mali. You have to prepare yourself. You have to know what is really Montessori, what are the principles behind Montessori na pwede mong i-apply sa baby mo or sa toddler mo or sa kids mo na pwede mo siyang i-adopt sa lifestyle nyo. So, dapat, you really know, you are prepared kung ano yung pwedeng gawin ng anak mo and then after that, you have to be prepared. And sa Montessori, you shouldn't have this preconceived or pre prejudged idea na kung ano yung pwedeng gawin ng anak mo. You have to observe them and then, you have to just let them. Let them and you have to know kung, kung saan ka lulugar at kung saan, kung sa kailan mo sila tutulungan, kailan ka mag intervene or kung kailan sila, hahayaan mo lang sila to just 
be on their own. To just play on their own or do, do an activity on, on their own. Hindi lagi tayong tumutulong. Hindi lagi tayong nagtuturo. We have to also be prepared that sometimes hindi nila tayo kailangan in this area and sometimes kailangan nila tayo in this area. So, kailangan ikaw mismo role model ka. Children learn not from what you say but from what we do. Okay? So, I believe this is very broad, itong pagiging prepared adults. So, uh, baka gumawa ako ng another video for this on how to be a prepared adult. So, stay tuned and I, I pray ikaw mismo you will prepare yourself. Uh, in starting Montessori. Number two steps, observe the child. So, lagi kong sinasabi in my previous video and on every video is you must follow the child or follow the lead of the child. Like, observe them on a daily basis on what they are up to at the moment. Kailangan tanong mo sa sarili mo, what is my child interest at the moment? So, start from there. Like, halimbawa, is he more on motor skills or running or uh, or moving a lot, climbing, or is he more on sit-down activities like painting, counting, uh, alphabets, not really on academics, but uh, Montessori is all about everything that the child do. You just have, you just have to give them the freedom to move, to the freedom to do whatever they want, and then makikita mo na, you can observe from there, and then you can start from there. So, you must have the time to observe your child every day so that you will see kung ano yung interest nila as of the moment. Number three steps is to prepare the environment. So, ito yung, minsan, ito yung unang-unang ginagawa ng mga parents. Agad-agad, they prepare the toys, they prepare the shelves, pero this is just the third step. Kasi you have to prepare yourself first, you have to observe your child, and then the third step is now you can prepare the environment. If you are starting pa, or you're starting with your baby, no more, wala pang toys, mas maganda. Start small, start, uh, start ka muna sa mga rattles, sa mga mobiles, so... As in, konti muna. Okay? And now, if you have a child na, and tapos marami ka ng mga electronic toys na nabili sa kanya, start ditching them. Pero, iwan mo yung mga educational toys or yung mga tinatawag nilang open-ended toys. Uh, why? Because, kapag kasi sinabi mong mga electronic toys, yun lang yun eh. Yun lang siya. Kapag ka pinindot niya, gagalaw siya or sa sound siya. And wala na siyang wala na siyang malalaman. So, with open-ended toys or yung mga wooden toys or yung mga toys na may shapes, mga may iba't ibang for educational purposes, the child can do whatever they want. So, they can be creative and mas marami silang malalaman. We need the children to unleash their potentials. Okay, so kapag na-ditch mo na yung mga uneducational, noisy, electronic toys, you have some low-lying shelves and yung mga gamit na pwedeng gamitin ng mga bata on their own, like broom na maliit, like uh, mga cloth na pwede niyang kunin. Yung mga purpose ng low-lying shelf, para may para makuha nila yung mga toys na, or mga materials na gusto nilang kunin anytime they want and then they can put them back anytime they are finished. So, try to be organized, try to be clean, and try to be all orderly. Because we are teaching them self-discipline and we are teaching them independence. Basta start simple, start sa konti lang, kasi you are still observing your child. You are still on the area of uh, of knowing what your child's interest is. So, start small. Huwag kang bili agad ng maraming maraming toys. Start ka dun muna sa interest ng anak mo. And then eventually, makikita mo naman on your own. Step number four Involve the child. Okay, involving the child may mean having the child beside you and and letting them help you on your tasks. It's like practical life skills or simply talking to them about their surroundings. Toddlers especially, mahilig yan uh, kung ano yung ginagawa mo, gusto nila, ginagawa din nila. Si Lucas, yun yung number one talaga na napansin ko sa kanya, mahilig siya sa... Uh, practical life skills talaga. Halimbawa, nakita lang niya kung nagwawales, kukunin na niya agad yung broom niya and then, Mommy, I will help you. You have to involve them on what you do. Kung dati, iniiwas natin sila, hindi natin sila sinasali sa mga tasks natin kasi baka mat matagalan or messy. So ngayon, in Montessori, you have to involve them. Medyo messy nga lang talaga at medyo matagal because it's always about the process. Which leads me to my last step, 
embrace the mess and allow freedom of movement. If ayaw mo nang dumi or ayaw mo nang kalat, huwag mo nang itry. And huwag ka na, huwag ka na magtry. Kasi at first talaga, madumi, makalat, sobrang uh, messy, ganun. Lalo na if you let them eat on their own, they, you will let them get what they want to get. You will let them uh, help you on your task. Sobrang makalat, sobrang matagal ang process. But, sabi ko nga, it's always the process and not the result. But, sa katagalan, you will see talaga kung ano yung madudulot niya. You will find them returning their trays on the shelf. Tapos, parang automatic na lang sa kanila na kapag may kinuha sila, tapos pagtapos na sila, ibabalik na lang nila. You don't have to tell them. So, kanina sinabi ko dun sa prepared environment, you have to be orderly, you have to be organized. Kasi, kung ano yung nakikita ng bata, kung saan siya nasanay, yun yung kakalakihan niya. Without just, without just telling them, you have to show them. Like, for example, kay Lucas, for example, may kinuha siya na ikinuha niya yung alcohol niya sa, uh, dun sa kung saan yung alcohol. Automatic sa kanya na after niyang ginamit, kahit hindi na namin sabihin sa kanya na ibalik niya, automatic na ibabalik niya. So, sabi ko, grabe, ganito pala yung uh, result ng Montessori. So, this is just a part of their principle. Pero, ang ganda na ng mga nagiging result sa bata. Whenever he is hungry, dahil merong nakaprepare na snack sa kitchen niya, kukuha lang siya ng bowl and kukunin niya yung snack niya. Siya mismo, he will prepare his own snack without disturbing me. So, ganun siya kaganda. So, I pray kayo din, uh, malaman nyo and makita nyo kung yung magic Actually, it's not the magic. Really, how you prepare the environment for them and how you involve them on on tasks that they wanted to be involved. So you just have to embrace the mess, and after that, makita mo rin kung ano yung result ng lahat ng mga pagpapagud mo sa baby mo or sa toddler or sa kids mo. Remember to start small. Rotate lang ng toys because sa Montessori, less is more. Lalo na kapag baby pa yan at toddler, sobrang konti pa lang ng mga toys niyan. And you just have to enjoy kung ano yung ginagawa mo. Because without a happy mommy, hindi rin magiging happy yung baby mo. You have to be happy on what you do. You have to enjoy what you do so that yung baby mo makikita niya na masaya ka and siya din magiging happy baby din siya. So that's it. I hope you learned so much from this video. Don't forget to like this video. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel para mas marami pa kaming video like this na magawa. Please stay tuned on our third series of All About Montessori. And I pray marami kayong tutunan. I pray marami kaming matutulungan with this video. And I hope you will share this video to your friends and to your family. So that's it. Salamat po. Thank you for watching. And God bless your family. Bye! Welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, I am Mommy She. I have a two-year-old baby boy named Lucas. We do family vlogs, vlogs related to babies and toddlers, baking, parenting, breastfeeding, and all about Montessori. So for today, I am going to share to you the third series of All About Montessori. So we have a first series and second series, and I will leave a link on the description box below if you want to watch that before watching this video please head on to those videos and then and then come back to this video para mas maintindihan mo kung ano ba talaga yung Montessori but if you already watched them you can continue watching this video so today we, I am going to share to you how to set up your Montessori shelf so I have tips for you and guides on how to set up them so without further ado let's start so number one tip is on Montessori, less is more. Okay? You have to be minimal. You have to be organized. Kailangan minimalistic ka lang. Konti lang yung mga toys mo. And syempre, dapat they are organized. 
So, hindi katulad ng mga naksanayan natin na lahat ng mga toys ng mga babies natin is nakalabas. Sa Montessori, pili lang yung mga toys na nakalabas. Wow. If you have a divider, if you have a shelf, it is important that you have a shelf para paglagyan ng mga toys na to. So, if you have this kind of shelf na wala siyang divider, it is important na nakahiwahiwalay yung mga activities mo. For example, dapat meron silang mga spaces between. If you have this shelf naman na meron ng divider, it is important that every cube, every cube, one toy lang siya. One cube, one toy. Para hindi malito yung mga bata and para, para ma-separate yung mga activities. So, yung mga shelves, shelves should be low and accessible. Dapat kung kailan gustong kumuha ng mga bata or kailan nila gustong ibalik, nang mag-isa nila, kaya nila. So, ano nga ba ang benefits ng low shelf? Siyempre, unang-una, Sabi ko nga kanina, they can easily reach kung ano yung gusto nilang makuha na toy. Pangalawa, they can easily see yung mga activities. So, it is very attractive to them to get the, the activities kasi nakikita nila. And then number three, to instill yung sense of order and organization sa mga bata. And then lastly, it makes clean up very easy. So kapag ka merong mga, lalo na yung mga maliliit na, uh, uh, mga maliliit na toys or mga puzzles, kapag hiwa-hiwala yung mga, uh, mga materials mo, madali lang silang i-clean up. And not unlike kapag uh, magkakasama sila sa isang basket, tas nandun na lahat. So mahirap, una-una, mahirap hanapin, tapos mahirap at linisin. So yun yung mga benefits ng low shelf. And kapag organize ka and orderly yung mga materials and activities ng bata. So, number two tip, you have to put a variety on his activities. Kapag halimbawa, meron ka ng isang activity na puro puzzles siya, hindi pwedeng lahat ng mga activities niya all about puzzle. You have to put a structure on his play because play is the work of the child. Sa paglalaro nila, dun sila natututo, dun sila nag explore Kaya sobrang importante ng paglalaro sa mga bata. A child deprived of play is deprived of learning and education or de deprived of discovery. Kaya kailangan, we let them play. We give them the necessary materials. We give them the necessary toys for them to learn. Toys are not to entertain them. Toys must be to educate them and to let them explore and discover things. So, paano mo malalaman kung ano yung mga ilalagay mo na toys na variety sa shelf? You must, again, follow the child. Observe the child interest at the moment and dapat alam mo kung ano yung sensitive period niya which I will be talking sa mga next video sa mga series sa mga next series ng ating all about Montessori yung ating sen yung sensitive period ng mga bata so kailangan uh, you must follow the, the the lead of the child kung ano yung interest niya as of the moment kailangan yun yung mga ilagay mo sa kanyang shelf so, as a starting point, I will be sharing to you the shelf of Lucas for this month. Kung gusto niyo panoorin yung Montessori's shelf niya last April and May, I will leave also a link down below the description box. So, this month, nag-rotate na kami ng mga toys and I will share to you para meron kayong guide kapag ka nag-set up na kayo ng Montessori shelf niyo. So, eto na. So, this is what his actual shelf looks like. Hmm. or actual play place ayan yung play place niya this is his shelf ito yung kung saan niya kung saan siya kumakain and where he where he make his artworks where he reads this is his kitchen ginagawa niya this is really a practical life kitchen and a kitchen na pwede niyang mag pretend play ito yung madalas niyong makita sa video so we will start dito sa taas Dito sa taas, nandito yung kanyang mga uh, different kinds of cars. And this one is a slippery car truck. This will help them sa pagbabasa kapag ka later on pag magbabasa na sila. And syempre, this is all open-ended play. And kasama na tong rainbow stock, rainbow niya. And then also this a uh, fire truck that he really loves to play with. The first uh, square here, big square, it's all, this is all about language slash alphabets. Okay, so if you will see here, meron din siya ditong pang sensorial and syempre also for al alphabets. This knob cylinders, also para din uh, tumigas yung hawak niya sa ball pen or sa pencil para pag nagsulat siya makakatulong sa kanya. And then also this flashcards. Uh, 
for letters, big letter and small letters. Also, this kind of letters na pwede niyang hawakan because as you know, sa Montessori, they are more on practical. So, mas effective para sa mga bata kapag naahawakan nila. Huwag ako ng dalawang uh, tray para i-separate yung mga activities. So, dito sa first activities, ito yung mga animals niya. Ang activity niya ngayon dito sa mga animals niya is matching with their young. Okay, if you will see, ito yung baby, uh, ito yung big giraffe and meron siyang small giraffe dito. So, ayan. So, uh, he's studying the concept of big and small and medium. And also the concept of daddy, mommy, and baby. Itong animal shelf niya na to, slash science shelf slash language corner. Tagal na to dito. Siguro mga na sa 3 months na siya or more. Pero iniiba-iba ko lang. And minsan nilalagyan ko ng flashcard and everything. Kasi favorite niya tong corner na to. Lagi niya tong uh, hinahanap. And then this one naman are his puzzles. Okay. Ito yung mga puzzles niya. Of course, it helps him for his hand-eye coordination and cognitive skills. Yung mga puzzles na yan. So, next, if we go down here, you can see this tray. I call this emotional emotional uh, flashcard tray. So, because it's a sensitive period for emotional control na until two and a half years old. So, madalas yung ngayon yung pag-iyak niya, madalas yung pag ina na, different kind of emotion niya. So, uh, naglagay kami ng emotion cards dito para ma-identify niya kung ano yung emotion na nararamdaman niya. Different kinds of emotion yan that I printed lang on my own. This is his music corner. Madami siya actually guitar, madami siya actually mga uh, musical instrument, but uh, inire-rotate-rotate rotate ko lang to. Meron siyang piano, guitar, and his cymbals. This is his mathematics corner. So, ayan. Uh, I will not teach him mathematics yet, but syempre, sa pagbibuild nila ng blocks, natututo siya kung ng calculation. Kailangan bata pa lang train na sila. So, lahat ng ginagawa ng bata either play lang yan or what. It is their work and natututo sila. So, ayan. This is also for open-ended play. Building blocks. This corner is his crayons. And sometimes, ito yung painting niya. And then, ang hilig niya ngayon is to write. Kahit ano-ano yung mga nira-write niya dito. Nagra-write siya ng mga letters. Nagdo-drawing siya and everything. And gustong gusto niya ito ngayon. Kahit na medyo nasisira na siya. Hindi ko pa siya tinatanggal kasi usable pa naman siya. And then of course, ito yung kanyang uh, kitchen. So this is his kitchen. So madalas naglalagay ako ng pagkain dito. Kaya lang ngayon, hindi pa ako nakapaglagay kasi naubos na yung supplies niya. And, pero, dito sa down, dito yung mga gamit niya. Dito yung mga madalis kapag gusto niya ng snacks, nagugutom siya. Siya mag-isa niya, kukuha siya ng, okay, kukuha siya ng snacks dito. And, ito yung bowl niya. And then, he will, he will get his own snack. And then, down here is itong measuring cup niya and his glass. And yung mga ginagamit niyang kitchen tools. Meron siyang knife, wooden knife, measuring spoon, tong, and ito yung spoon na madalas niyang gamitin. And then, on this corner, is yung kanyang self-care corner. So, meron siyang towel dito. Ayan. Meron siyang towel, meron siyang brush, meron siyang lotion, and then yung nail cutter niya. And then, his alcohol. Okay. So, that's it. Pag kailangan niya yan, pupunta lang siya dito and ready to get na yung mga yan. And then, dito naman yung mga pang panglinis niya. Ito yung broom niya. And then, yung pangsakpang pandakot. Tapos, ito yung dust. Dust. Tapos, ito yung pang roll sa carpet or sa mat niya. And then, ito pang patay ng langaw. And then, this is his mm, uh, map. So, that's all. Third tip is to display your activities in trays or baskets. Napaka-important nito for your child so that they will identify which materials, so that they can identify one material or one activity to another. So, 
Tay kalimbawa si Lucas, kapag uh, kinuha niya yung tray niya na merong mga puzzles and then nakita niya doon yung isang piece ng alphabet niya dahil alam niya that the alphabet does not belong to the puzzle tray tatanggalin niya yung alphabet and then ilalagay niya doon sa alphabet tray talaga so ganun ka importante kahit na hindi ko siya tinuruan nabibigla na lang ako ginagawa niya yon or halimbawa meron nandoon yung uh, other to, uh, car tray niya kapag ka kinuha niya yon at merong ibang item doon na hindi car he will throw it. Tatanggalin niya kapag hindi siya kasama doon. Okay? So, it's also important na yung mga tray or yung mga basket na meron silang hawakan sa side para sa mga baby pa or para, para sa mga small children pa para sa nila mga tiny hands para makuha nila agad sa shelf at hindi sila mahirapan to carry it sa shelf and to put it back sa shelf. So, number four tip, you have to present the activities undone. When I say undone, for example, sa puzzles, kapag nilagay mo na yung puzzle na buo na siya, tendency is hindi na nila kukunin yun kasi buo na siya. Pero kapag nilagay mo siya that hindi pa sila tapos or hindi siya nakaayos naka as a puzzle talaga, pieces lang siya, they will, parang it will be parang attractive sa kanila to get it from the shelf and to and to get it from the shelf and to complete the puzzle. You have to present them undone. Para kapag kakinuha nila, attractive yun sa kanila para they will make it on their own. Number five tip is to rotate the toys. There is no parang hard rule naman kung kailan mo i-rotate, kung every month ba, every two months ba, every week or what. It is always dependent on the lead of the child. That's why it is important that you observe your child kung ano yung kanyang interest as of the moment. Ano ba yung mga lead kapag kailangan mo nang tanggalin yung toy? Siyempre, una-una, kapag ka matagal na niyang hindi nilalaro o hindi na niya hinahawakan. Pangalawa, kapag uh, na-master na niya yung toy and hindi na niya pinapansin. And number three, kapag sira siya or merong missing piece. It is important that you limit your activities to 8 to 10 activities only. Para hindi sila na-overwhelm and para mabilis silang makahanap ng activity na gusto nila. So, yun nga, there's no set schedule para sa pagpapalit ng mga items mo. It always depend on the lead of the child. Important tip then is do not remove the item that is always played. Kahit gano pa yan katagal sa shelf niya, kahit 2 months, 3 months na, kung lagi niya nilalaro yan, kung lagi niyang kinukuha yan, so be it. Hayaan mo siya. Like for example, kay Lucas, yung mga animals, nomenclature niya, ang tagal na nun sa shelf niya. Sobrang tagal na, ang ginagawa ko lang, minsan nilalagyan ko ng flashcard, minsan uh, matching sila ng baby, uh, babe, uh, mother animal and baby animals. Iba-iba activities, pero never ko pa siyang tinanggal doon kasi lagi niyang nilalaro yun. And every time na nagbaba siya, siya ng book, which is most of their books, uh, most of their books consist of animals, animals, uh, characters. Pag nagbaba siya, siya ng book, kapag may nakita siyang lion doon, kukunin, kukuha, kukunin niya yung lion niya sa shelf niya and then i-match niya. Yun nga, do not remove any item that is always played because maybe there's a need for repetition, minamaster pa nila lalo yun, and there's a sense of fulfillment for them na kapag ka nabuo nila yun or pag ginagamit nila yun, sumasaya sila, maybe it is also a stress reliever for them. So what about books naman? Sa mga books naman, it is important na meron siyang sariling shelf or lalagyan sa mga books niya. Imbis na ilalagyan natin sila ng parang ganito, we have to face the books na nakaharap yung cover nila. So, yun. They should see the cover of the book and it should be accessible for them. If wala kang shelf na nakaharap yung mga books mo, you can you can always, uh, you can also use, alam niyo yung mga spice rack sa IKEA? Yan, pwede rin yung mga yan. Or if wala ka talagang shelf, pwede kang kumuha ng basket and dun mo ilagay yung mga books. Siyempre, dapat few books at a time lang. Huwag mo lahat ilagay yung mga books niya. Ako, for example, sa akin, I use this cart na, nila, na, na lalagyan ng mga blocks niya dati. Nilagyan ko ng mga books ito. And then, finish forward ko yung mga books niya para anytime na gusto niyang, gusto niyang kunin, makukuha niya. And then, it is very accessible for him. And yeah, I just DIY'd it. I just DIY'd that kasi wala akong shelf. 
So that's it for today. I hope you learned so much from this video. And if you have set up your shelf after this video, please send me yung picture sa akin para makita ko because I will be so glad na natulungan ko kayo sa pagsiset up ng Montessori shelf ninyo. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel para updated kayo because we upload videos 2 to 3 times a week. Please like this video and comment down below ng mga additional tips nyo pa kung paano mag-start ng Montessori shelf. And don't forget to share this video to your friends and family. Say thank you for watching and I hope you learned so much from this video. See you on our next video guys. God bless you and your family. Bye! This, this is, is my cookie. Okay. back to our channel. If you are new here, I'm Mom She. I have a two-year-old toddler named Lucas. We do family vlogs, vlogs related to babies and toddlers, parenting, mommyhood, Montessori, discipline, and everything under the sun. So, for today, I'm going to share to you the shelf, Montessori shelf of Lucas for the month of June to July. So, Maraming nagre-request nito actually sa Instagram at yung mga mummies na lagi daw ako mag-share ng mga shelf ideas. So for today, I'll be showing you the shelf of Lucas. I will be giving you a tour sa shelf niya. So without further ado, let's start. So ito yung itsura ng buong play place niya. Hi! Okay, so meron siyang konting swing and slide there. This is his mat. Siya. Ito yung additional shelf niya na dati niyang store. And then, ito yung mga paintings niya. Tsaka yung mga practical life skills tools niya for cleaning. Other paintings. Books. Couch. His mat for the cars. Niya. This is his main shelf. This is his chair and this is his kitchen. So this is what his shelf looks like today. Ayan. Nag-rotate din kami ng mga furniture. Ayan. So the first one is the... Animals. Animals. So ito, lat lagi itong nasa shelf niya. Nilagyan ko lang ngayon ng mga flashcards. So ito yung... So sa... Wild animals kami this week. Baka next week palitan ko to ng farm animals. Okay. Are you gonna show them how you match? This rainbow na dati nang nasa shelf niya. And I put also this book full of colors. Ayan, which I showed a while ago. Kasama rin to sa binili namin sa book sale. And it cost 90 pesos. Yes, that's your book. And then next are these monster trucks. Matagal na itong mga to Binalik ko lang. Kasi may ilip siya ngayon sa mga cars. Ayan, show them how you play your cars. Down here, we have this uh, pretend play section. Ito yung bago sa kanya. Although, dati na niya nilaro to, binalik ko lang itong family dolls that she really, he really loves playing. And itong apat na to na love niyang laruin. Kapag ka nalulungkot siya or upset siya, kukuha siya dito. 
So these are his comfort uh, comfort toys. Together with this magnet tiles here. Itong lalagyan niya na super love ko. I bought this at Daiso. For only 88 pesos. So, pinagsama ko sila kasi madalas ginagawa, gumagawa siya ng bahay and then ito yung mga ginagawa, nilalagay niya na characters. This alphabet. Dito kami ngayon sa lower case letters. Memorize na niya lahat. Kaya lang, mas pinapapamiliarize pa namin. And then, the letter A here. I'm planning to put flashcards here that all na nag-start lahat sa letter A. Under it are these blocks na dati nang nandito. Ayan. And then, beside is the new one that we bought. Na nandito yun sa Shopee Hall ko. Yung doctor's kit. So, what's behind? What's inside your doctor's kit? Can you show them? Not. And then, minsan, itong mga ito niya, ayan, ino-operate niya yung mga yan, chine-check up niya, yan yung mga pasyente niya. And then, next is this color, color shelf here. My favorite niya ngayon, dahil mahilig siya ngayon sa mga ko identifying colors. So, I made this uh, foam, foam, On this corner, it's his second shelf. Oh, hi Lucas. So here we have this shape sorter and also they have different colors and different shape. But we put them here. And he's gonna show you how to put them. We have this emotion cards. I made a bigger one. Para mas mapansin niya and mas maintindihan niya. Oh no, it fell by so, And then, konti lang siya. Yung mga usual lang na emotions nila. Ayan. And then, we have here a mirror. Para kapag pinapractice na yung mga emotions niya. Ayan. We use this mirror. Hi! And then, down here, we have this pokpok. We call this pokpok. Or pounding toy. Can you show them, Lucas, how you use it? Yan. So, matagal na tong toys niya. Nilabas ko lang ulit. And how do you put them back? And these are the knob cylinders. If you notice, laging undone yung mga activities niya. Para it's inviting for the child. Can you show them, Lucas, how you use them? the ball corner dahil mahilig siyang mag-throw ng toys niya. So, I always redirect him to throw these balls here. Ayan, out of focus na. Ayan. What do you throw only, Lucas? Not your? Yes, not your toys. Ayan, like that. Thank you. Okay, so next are his books. He wanted to show you his books. Can you show them your book? So, these are the ones that I thrifted wow. from the book sale. So, this is the first book that we're gonna show you. This is the Dear Zoo. Na sobrang mahal nito sa Amazon. Pero I thrifted it for only how much, anak? 90 pesos! Oh, what's the title of that book? Happy hand. Ayan. Ito, talagang ang ganda nito. It's a flip-flop box. Pag bukas mo, lalabas na yung parang 3D siya. And this one naman, it's what's that? It's a duck. Ito naman, sira lang yung lalagyan niya ng mga stick. Ah, hindi siya sticker. Actually, may mga magnets siya. Where are the, this one? Like this. Oh, ayan. Tapos, nadidikit siya sa book. Ito naman, pangarap ko to dati bilhin sa kanya. Tapos biglang nakita ko siya sa book sale. 
Ayan, mga A, B, C, ganun. And lahat ng, bawa, letter K. Lahat ng letter K. And it only cost us, how much? 165. And sobrang bago pa niya. And ito yung isa sa mga favorite niya. Playtime Peekaboo. Yes, ayan. Ito, gusto gusto niya to. Kasi these are parang, nafe-feel mo talaga siya. Kung saan siya nag-i-eat, kung saan siya nagko-color, nag-i-read, and everything. And then, on here, we'll leave a link on the description box below kung gusto nyo makita yung laman ng loob na to. Kasi na na-vlog ko na yun. So, same lang siya. Hindi pa naman siya napapalitan. Except for these vegetables na nilagay namin dito para pag nag-pretend play siya na nagluluto siya. Here. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. So, I hope you like this video. I hope marami kayong natutunan sa videos na to. And I hope nagkaroon na naman kayo ng inspiration para sa mga babies ninyo na maggumawa din kayo ng Montessori shell for them and to, uh, to follow their lead and to make a prepared environment for them. So, if you like this video, give this a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below yung mga thoughts ninyo about these videos. And if you want more of videos like this, please do subscribe to our channel and click the bell button para lagi kayong updated sa mga videos namin because we upload videos 2 to 3 times a week. So, that's all. I hope you learned so much from this video. And I hope na tulungan na naman namin kayo. So, thank you for watching. God bless you and your family. Bye! Welcome back to our channel. So, this is Mommy She. Today, we are going to show you a tour of our toddler's mini kitchen and dining corner. Hope you will watch until the end. So, without further ado, let's start! So, in this corner, we have this wall decor here. It's a wooden wall decor and here we have the chopping board where he chop his fruits vegetable or this is also where he prepare his breakfast there is a uh, basahan here wet basahan so that he can wipe kung ano man yung madum kung dudumi man yung chopping board and then here we have fruits always available of course with assistance pa so dati itong yan ganyan yung function niya dati. Pero dahil hindi naman niya masyado nilalaro, we make it a functional kitchen and we put some fruits here. And then as we go along down here, and we have his snacks para kapag ka nagutom siya, siya mag-isa niya, he can get his snacks on his own. We have Cheerios and some uh, honey bunch oats with almonds. And then, we also have here, mga leftover kasi dito eh. So, dito niya nilalagay yung mga leftover. Yung Nutri bar niya and some butter, butter cookies. Okay, and then, here, in the bottom, we have some utensils. We have his knife that he can use for chopping his fruits. Some more tongs. Uh, this one for mixing. And this one for scooping. And here, we have some of his plates and his glass jar. Glass cup. And then, as we move along here, Hope it won't close. As we move along here, 
we have his self-care kit. Meron siyang diaper. He get his own diaper. Hindi pa kasi siya potty train. Wala pa akong oras mag potty train sa kanya. His massager. His uh, brush. His uh, mosquito lotion. And his alcohol. So this is his functional kitchen or sink. Kitchen sink. Ayan. This is just an old table that we repurposed. We painted it white and then binutas namin para bumaba itong uh, functional sink niya. And then we have this wall painting over here. And we just printed this on our own. And then, ito yung faucet niya na working siya. So, basically, umiikot lang yung tubig. And we have a sponge here para pag naguhugas siya ng oops, focus. Para pag naguhugas siya ng plates and then soap for hand wash and also for washing his plates na para isahan na lang. And then his bowl. Some of his bowl. And then yeah, that's it. And then down here we have a towel. Kasi kapag ka medyo naglalaro pa siya while he is washing his dishes, nababasa yung part na to. So, we have this towel on hand para nilalagay namin dito. A mat para kapag uh, magkaroon ng mga spillage or what, hindi siya madulas. Okay, this is a control for error mat. <laughs> and then we have this here. His basurahan or trash can. And then, of course, this one, lagi ito sa video ko, yung cleaning tools niya. May mask siya dito. He have his broom, his fly, fly trap or fly killer or whatever. He has his dust, dust, uh, I don't know what you call this, <laughs> pero panglinis ng dust. And then, this one yung pang roll sa carpet. And this one is a mop. Okay. Here we have this uh, table, mini, kasi nga, mini dining and kitchen set. Ay, mini dining and kitchen. We have this table. Then we have this sign here which says follow the child. And then a little rainbow there. <laughs> and then we have his color crayons here and a bell. And yung pambura sa board. And then here, kumahdi, he eats here. He read his book and whatever thing that he wanted to do. Above here is our little window decor. We have this fake plant here. Na merong uh, babasagin na white pot. And then this one that he used for gardening. Pagka nasa labas kami, he used this for watering the plants. And then this one, nilagay lang niya dito ito. And this one here, this little design here says that says, Jesus loves me. I think this one also lights. Ayo, nagla light siya. Okay, so yun lang. That's all, mommies. Ito yung full view ng kanyang mini kitchen. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please like this video and comment down below to say hi. Please share this to your friends and family. Thank you for watching. God bless you and your family. Bye!